Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolour.co.uk and thank you very much for joining me today. Now, normally at this point in the video, I show you a finished project and uh, I tell you what it is and I say stay with me and I will show you how I made it. But uh, today I'm doing things a little bit differently because today I thought I would show you how I go about calculating uh, the size I need when I'm making a box to fit a particular item. And the item that I'm going to be making a box for is this cute little fella. Uh, so yeah, stick around and we'll see what we wind up with. Here's the object that I want to create a box for. Um, it's a little polymer clay dragon that I made a few years ago. I made uh, a whole series of them uh, based on the work of Christy Friesen who writes uh, wonderful books about how to make dragons out of polymer clay among other things and makes wonderful things herself and uh, I do urge you to go and find out more about her. Um, and this is my little effort. Um, like I said I made a whole series of them. This happens to be the air dragon. Uh, I made a fire dragon, an earth dragon and a water dragon as well uh, and I made them all on pebbles which I picked up on the beach. Now if this little dragon uh, was confined within the pebble all I would need to do would be to draw around the pebble and that would give me uh, something to measure the size of my box from but actually he kind of sticks out a bit around here he's got wings that, that poke out so I'm going to draw some little points around there okay so I hope he's going to fit inside that point so it's very rough and ready and very sketchy at the moment okay so now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to trace around the base of the pebble as far as I can. Okay, so I'm going to take that away and I'm going to incorporate this more or less smoothly into my shape. I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to bring it so that I can look over the top. Does that fit in? Mm. Yes, it does. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to find that widest point. And I'm going to get it as uh, straight as I possibly can. I'm going to draw a line across. I'm going to turn it round and on this side I'm going to find the widest point again line up my ruler and draw across and then the same thing on this axis find the widest point and draw across and the same thing on this axis find the widest point and draw across so that'll give me the dimensions of the base of my box so I'm going to measure between these two lines and that gives me just under four inches. So I'm going to give it some ease and I'm going to call it four and a quarter. And I'm going to write that down. And then this size, again, uh, I'm going to measure that line and it comes to three and a half. And again, I'm going to give it some ease. So I'm going to call it three and three quarters. So that'll give me the base of my box. Now I want to know how deep I need to make it. And for this, I'm going to put my, now it's very difficult for you to see this, but what I'm doing is I'm putting my dragon flat on the table and I'm going to stand the ruler behind it and I'm going to get something straight. In this case, it's an emery board and it lines up at about two inches. And again, let's give it a quarter of an inch ease and we'll call that two and a quarter. Okay, so those are my calculations. So now I need to sketch a box. Okay, so now I know my measurements. So I know the base of my box is four and a quarter by three and three quarters. So that's three and three quarters. 
and this is going to be two and a quarter and that's going to be two and a quarter and this is two and a quarter and this is two and a quarter and this is two and a quarter okay so widthways it's two and a quarter by two and a quarter which is four and a half and four and a half and four and a quarter is eight and three quarters so this way two and a quarter and three and a quarter is six inches uh, six inches and two and a quarter is eight and a quarter so here's the granite grey card and I've cut it to the size I need and I'm going to score at two and a quarter inches I'm going to rotate the card score at two and a quarter inches and again two and a quarter inches and one more time two and a quarter inches and that's going to be my box base now for the knight of navy card uh, i'm also going to score a two and a quarter inches but i am going to use this this is my box lid shim and it's an idea i got from watching connie stewart on simply simple stamping uh, and all it is, it's a piece of quite thick acetate, which I've, um, I've, uh, I've creased so that it fits over the edge of my, my simply scored board. And I've glued a couple of pieces of card along the edge of it. And that is going to move my piece of Knight of Navy just enough so that uh, it will fit smoothly over the base and not not be too tight so this is a lovely easy way of doing it rather than trying to do calculations where you get into sixteenths and even thirty seconds of an inch and you know my head just starts to hurt at that point uh, so that I have my two whoops come back and gray my two scored pieces of card Burnishing the score lines to get a nice sharp crease, and I have my my trusty snips. Uh, which way am I going to do this? It isn't really going to matter. So I'm just going to cut just a little skinny wedge out of that edge. Just a tiny little bit. Oops, come on, get away there. The same thing on this side. Skinny little wedge. And over here, same thing. And the same thing. And I'm going to shorten these little flaps a bit. Just because they're a little bit bulky. And they'll take up a bit of room inside my, my box. So my box is going to go like that. So going to put some tear and tape there. and I'm also going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive as well because this is quite a sizable box and uh, my little dragon is quite heavy really come on off you come and I'm just going to take care to fold those edges so they're nice and square don't want any wonky boxes okay 
Now, if I was just using liquid adhesive, um, I would probably need to, to hold the sides together with something like, um, you know, a, a binder clip or clothes peg or something like that, or a paper clip even, just so that when it all um, had, you know, it had time to set up properly. But because I've also got the tape there, I don't need to do that. Okay. So there is my box base. Here the Knight of Navy card in the same way as I did for the grey granite. And this is going to be the lid. And uh, I want to cover it with some of the Twinkle Twinkle Designer Series paper before I uh, glue it all together because I find that, generally speaking, it's easier to do uh, do things like this when the paper is still flat rather than uh, when you've made the entire 3D object. So this piece is three and a half by four inches and this is going to be the top of the box. This paper is so so pretty. It's a good thing that they give you two pieces of uh, each pattern because how would you choose which one you were going to use? You know, I don't think I could choose. I honestly don't. Okay, so this piece is uh, 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 that's one of the, the side pieces. So that is three and a half inches by two inches. And I've cut two pieces that are this size. And lastly, this piece is, you measure it, two inches by four inches. And again, I've cut two pieces that are this size. And actually, now I'm coming to put it all together. I probably could have got away with making my box a little bit smaller. This is, of course, what I, what I forgot to do was to... Uh, um, was to allow for the fact that I was kind of doubling up the, the ease, if you see what I mean. All right. Uh, now, one more thing before I put it together. I usually forget. I kind of scratched the halfway mark on here. And I'm just going to just snip out two little half circle notches. This is a three quarters of an inch circle punch that I'm using here. And that is going to help you open the box when it's all finished. So let's get started. I'm going to bring this in. And this side. And I slipped away a little bit too much there, but it doesn't matter because the Design a series paper will cover that up. Bar, bar, Jean. Oh, I didn't snip, didn't snip enough there. It's my scissors. Let me have my thing now. Right in front of me. As my granny would have said, if it had teeth, it would have bitten you. My granny was full of sayings like that. Same thing there because it's the opposite part of the same piece. You see how beautifully all of that is fitting together. Oops, got a bit of liquid adhesive there, but that doesn't matter because it's going to dry clear. And nobody will ever know unless you tell them, and you won't tell them, will you? You know, we're all friends here, aren't we? And there it is, there is my box lid. If I bring back the box base, they should, I hope, fit snugly together. 
I've chosen Happy Birthday from the Treat Time set for my sentiment and I've got it mounted up on my clear block. I've got my Night and Navy card and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a dusting with my embossing buddy. First of all, I think lots of light tapping and press that down onto my card. And I'm going to give that a couple of seconds for the ink to transfer properly. A spot of white embossing powder. And now all I need to do is to heat this for a couple of seconds. Whoops, bumped the tripod there, very sorry. I've got my uh, embossing gun and I'm going to put it on to high speed. Give it a couple of seconds to warm up and then I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment. That's had a few seconds to cool down and I'm just going to fit it into my everyday label punch. And I'm going to put it so that the sentiment is kind of more towards the bottom than the top. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm just going to close the jaws of the punch. And there is my punch sentiment. And I'm also going to punch one of these pieces out of some silver glimmer card. And just for good measure, we'll have a grey granite one as well. So now I'm going to stick these together and I'm going to put the Knight of Navy one on top of the grey granite piece and then I'm going to put the grey granite piece on top of the, the silver glimmer just so that it just sort of pops out kind of like that. And I did experiment with putting the silver in between the grey and the Knight of Navy, but I decided that I liked it this way. Okay, so because that's going on to glimmer paper, that's going to take a couple of uh, minutes to set, but I will put some dimensionals onto the back of it while I remember. Right, so I'm going to set that aside for the glue to dry up. Right. This is a piece of the Whisper White uh, Classic Weave Ribbon. I think that's what we're calling it. And I'm just going to tie myself a little bow. Well, that's actually quite a big bow, but I'm going to make it smaller. Okay. So let's see how that looks on there. Not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. There we go. Right, so let me put that on one side for a second because I also want to use some of this. This is new in the autumn winter catalogue and it's called braided linen trim. So I'm going to cut off a length of it, not too much, it's about four inches there. And they say that we can fray the ends. So let's have a go, shall we? And indeed we can. So how much of this do, do we want hanging around up? Probably got way too much, so let's cut a bit off the end there. Why not? Let's live dangerously because we've got loads of it. How much have we got? About 10 yards. So uh, there's plenty to go on there, you know. Hardly going to notice that I've had four, four inches off it. Oh, more like three inches now. Okay, so just going to fray those edges. And although it's a kind of a neutral colour, it actually works really, really well with the grey granite. It's very kind of sympathetic to it. Okay, so let's have a little bit of liquid adhesive there, just to slow things down a bit. Oh, let's pop that into place. Now you see, I didn't want it to do that. That was naughty of it. Okay, that's getting 
somewhere near what I want and now this piece on top I'll trim down the uh, the tails here and the ribbon okay. and again more liquid adhesive did get out some glue dots but glue dots and I are not friends you know they just don't like me they won't play with me and I've given up trying well that wasn't working out so I am going to have to resort to a glue dot after all so uh, let me just pick one up with my piercing tool pop it down on to my tag and then put the bow on top this is bow mark two that was bow mark one yeah didn't really work well okay now I do think that I want a little bit more bling on to this so what shall we have shall we have the rhinestone basic jewels shall we have the clear faceted gems or shall we have the pearl basic jewels not going to go with the pearls because I've already got a bit of glitter going on here but I think actually shall we use some of the the small rhinestones and shall we pop them here and there if they want to pop that is and one more because it's always odd numbers that you that you put on things so let's put that over there how's that looking what do you think should we have one of these as well shall we let's see yeah that is super blingy okay so let me bring back my my box and uh, I made a little nest with some with some tool for my my dragon so that he's nice and comfy And if I wanted to, at this point, I could uh, wrap some of my uh, of my ribbon around the side of the box. But I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to take the backings off the dimensionals. And I'm just going to put that onto the box at a jaunty angle. And that I'm going to call it finished. And that is it. So I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this video today. And if so, then don't forget to click the like button or even subscribe to my channel. Uh, come back and see me again sometime soon. Why don't you? I post twice a week. But for now, once again, thank you very much for joining me. And I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.